we got another running fish coming with some new gear. Okay, quick gear dump before we start. This is what I brought. I brought two rods that I think are gonna be a great comparison. These are both, well, one's 290, one's 300. This is the Kurenai HM30 and the Oni Coco 290. So they're basically, I mean, you can't get a better head to head. The rods are the same pack size. Um, they're both small stream rods. They both got a small grip. So I'm gonna fish those two today. Got my Tomo, and then I got this new Zimmer built quiver. Easily holds two Tenkara rods, and so I was running here, as you saw, with just my hands on this and then everything else in the fanny pack. Got hemostat snippers, little fly box that's a Trader Joe's mince container repurposed, and then my Curacao reel or spool with two lines on it, tip a card in the back. This is the one star leather case that I make and offer for other people. This also fits the Tenkara path spools, but that's the totality of the gear. Oh, and then I also have uh, eight ounces of water in a kid's smoothie pouch. So let's fish. All right, I'm here on the HM30. Got a little double glass bead, so I like a little bit of sink. This level line is uh, 2.0 and it's pink, trying a new color, see if it's better visibility. And the level line's about as long as the rod plus tippet. Should be able to pull a fish out of this, right underneath this waterfall. Let's see if we can. One cast at a time, one step at a time. Kerr and I have thrown this 2.0 level line really nicely. And I'm already snagged. Are you kidding me? Spots like this are tough because the flow is going to take the fly underneath this branch. So I gotta pull it out before it gets there. Oh, oh, I got a fish, I got a fish. He's under there. He's under there. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Wow, oh, quite a bend in this rod. All right, first fish on the Kurenai. First fish in this Japanese Tomo. Let's see this guy. Beautiful. All right, later, bud. Nice. Okay, so that guy was right there in the shade of that tree, as expected. Let's see if there's anybody else want to come out and play. Kurenai throws this lightweight level line beautifully and I mean it's just a, a joy for these small fish. I mean that one's probably seven inches or so and I think there's more in this stretch. About right over here. Probably already spooked this one too close to me. I think there's one here. The tip is just insanely flexible. All right now I'm gonna work up to the next pool is right there. I'll get that. All right, we're going under these trees. I'm gonna get as far up as I can. Let it flow down. Yeah, that's nice. Uh oh, I get a treat. Nope, just barely. Man, this thing just slingshots. It's like effortless casting. All right, I think I put it through enough times in here. If there was a fish in there, I would have caught it. And we're over here in this flow. Maybe there's something over on this side. Wow, this current is just effortless. That's the, that's the thing I keep saying, it's just effortless. You hardly have to move it at all. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my money on the fact that there's a fish in this pool up there by the white water. The right side. There we go. Oh, that was a bite. Yes. You know, sometimes the same fish will bite twice. You never know. Sometimes he's long scooped. We'll give it a couple more tries. We'll get up there at the top of the water. On the left side. Oh. I just threw a tiny fish. Did you see that? I just threw a tiny fish under that rock. My bad. Sorry, fishy. I'm going to bounce back in the water. Okay, well, there's something over there. That was tiny. That was a three-inch fish. I thought it was just the Kabari. So what else is over there? Come on, buddy. Who's over there? Who's over there? The fish, they're hitting. They're hungry. 
That was crazy. That was the smallest fish I've ever caught in a 10 power run. There's one. There's one. Yep. Got him. Yep. Oh, fighter. Look at this rod. Alright, second fish for this net. Come here, bud. Come here. Come on. Beautiful. Alright, bud. Here you go. So these rods are so much alike, the tip caps are even interchangeable. But they're like pretty much the exact same pack size. I think they're the same number of sections. The Oni, I think, is a little snappier. So I caught two fish on the Kuranai. It's hypersensitive effortless to cast. Now let's try the Oni, see what the difference is. Pretty sure anything in here is spooked, but we're gonna try it anyway. Oh, nope, that was current and bottom. The Oni is snappier, for sure. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, it came up. All right, well, we'll keep going. It might've been the same fish. Yeah, the Oni is much snappier. Different uh, different casting timing, obviously. Different rod. But from the reports and the reviews I read, this rod can handle bigger fish than the Kuranai because of the Kuranai's insanely thin tip section. But same, uh, just ultra lightweight in the hand. They're both under an ounce. And so my grip is just kind of like fingertips, light, not gripping it too hard. And also very accurate. Feels like this one would throw the line into the wind a little bit better. All right, well, I had that fish on and I don't know if there's gonna be anything else in this pool. Probably spooked it, so let's move up. I'll probably have to go bow and arrow cast because these trees, so I'm gonna try to hit those rocks right in there. See what happens. All right, seated here. I think I can get it in there. See if I can thread the needle right in there. Hit the leaf, but bounced off. That's a good spot. All right, lost the fly to the trees, so I put on another friend's fly. This is a, a fly from Dennis of Tenkara Path. Got some uh, fish with that. See what we can do. All right, this guy took it, but then actually ended up foul hooking him in the fin, bringing him in that way. There you go, bud. Beautiful fish, man. Let me ready. Here you go, bud. He actually tried to go up this waterfall and was stuck right there. All right, now we've got pretty decent overhead casting space. So, yeah, much snappier than the current eye. Sorry I wasn't rolling for that last fish. I didn't expect a one cast, one fish kind of deal. But there definitely could be something up in this deal. Yeah, it feels like it throws the line with a little more force. But it's picked up. I mean, it really throws the line. I got great reach all the way up to the top of that white water. Just landing it right in the white water, letting it float down. Maybe on that right side. Yep. Oh. I don't know if that was bottom or fish. Fish. Ooh, that was a fish a second time for sure. What, am I tangled? No. Come on, one more time, baby. Hit me, baby, one more time. I'm a child of the 90s. Let's go. There it is. There it is. Yep, got it. There he is. A little one. Look at the wee baby. Hey, bud. He flipped it out. Good job. Good job. I don't know about you, but I love little fish. I love little fish. They got so much personality, like this guy. Beautiful car marks. Look at that. 
Oh, so pretty. So cute. Later, bud. Bye-bye. Wow, this is a... Both these rods are just a joy. I know the Kurnai is out of production right now. Um, and I think Chris Stewart of Tenkara Bum is talking and they're gonna do another very similar si uh, series to the Kurnai that'll be coming out, hopefully, maybe this year. But um, this, this Oni is really exceptional. I mean, everyone said things like, this is the best small stream rod ever produced. And uh, you know, you've heard the hyperbole hype about this rod, but it is rather incredible. It doesn't have the fragility of the Kurinai, casts beautifully, and I think it can handle bigger fish than the Kurinai can. Let's move up. Constantly checking overhead for branches. We've lost one fly. I'd rather not lose another one today. Oh, that fish now. I've learned too in these small creeks, you either gotta set sideways so that if it pops up, it flings behind you or set kind of gently on the way up so you don't launch it into the trees above you. Sometimes you can see if it's a fish and just pop it up on the surface and then you can, God damn it. Uh, I just shut my mouth. I collapsed the rod and pulled straight down and surprisingly still have my fly, so. We're back at it, trying to make the same mistake again. See, when it gets tight like this in this stream, I do a lot of sidearm, just because you just can't tell. It only takes one twig to steal your fly. There we go, that's good. Nope, stuck on the rock. It's really, the force with which this rod throws the line forward is pretty incredible. Okay, we can pull, we gotta go sidearm. Of these trees. There we go, first cast of fish. Fish, fish, fish. Foot dog. Ah, that's there's more in here. We're biting today. Right there. Oh, yep, saw him come up. Ooh. Did you see that on the video? Came right over and hit it. We're gonna get him again. There he is, got him, got him, got him. Oh, it's a big one, a big fish. Here we go. He'd hit that pretty hard, I needed the hemostats. So let's see him. Oh, bud. Wow, another beautiful fish. Here you go. Yeah. This is what I love about little mountain streams. There's all these little like, rooms and places and nooks so fun all right great day so far with these two rods um first of all i love this zimmer built quiver I don't even notice it weighs nothing i mean the rod weighs an ounce the quiver weighs an ounce this single string that's great the uh, oni is definitely faster snappier but with the little fish the current is more fun I think, but we'll see. Maybe I'll switch back. Let's try to catch another fish on the Oni first. Oh, this little run looks really good. I might be able to overhead cast without getting snagged in a tree. Maybe. I'm gonna go sidearm lefty. Catch him anything with the fish right at the base of that rock. Yep. Oh, right about a rock. Right, maybe I can go straight up and then straight down. See. Yes, in the flow. Flow's taking it down into the hole. Stop, is that a fish or a rock? Popped it up, almost got snagged. Straight up, straight down, there we go. Okay. Any more of those. Turn over here, straight up, straight down through the, thread the needle of those branches. There's a fish. Oh, a branch, dang it. The sticks overhead, but I know there's fish in here. All right, here's my one last fish for the day.
All right, there's always time for one last, one last fish. Just to have a teeny tiny baby on like three inches. Back to the Kerr and I. And popped off. Let's just keep sneaking our way up here. See if there's something else in this flat part. Yeah, the Kerr is definitely a more effortless casting experience, but feels more delicate. Um, and on bigger fish, it feels just a little more exciting. <laughs> uh, it's rated for 7X. I've actually got more than that on here because I know there's no fish in here that will. Oh, there's one. Oh, I was like, there's no fish in here that will give. Uh, there's no big fish in here. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, I didn't even think, I didn't, didn't even feel the bite. Gentle mouthed fish. I wanted to stop for a second. I gave a slight test tug. Come on, hit it again, buddy. I scared you upstream. Yeah, I think the thing about this rod is small fish feel big. Oh, I just spooked something. All right, we're definitely gonna be able to pull something out of here. The word for the Kernai is effortless. It's just effortless. I thought the thin handle would have my hand fatigued, but it really doesn't because it just weighs nothing. So I don't end up gripping it that hard. As far forward in that pool as we can. There we go. Oh, that was good. Dang it. Just want one more, one more fish. Come on. One more, one last fish. Dropped the phone in the water. Was able to get it before it went downstream too far, so that's good. Hunting for this one last, one last fish. I've had three fish on, and they've all slipped off. I don't know if the stream gods want me to have one last fish today. If they do, this is a good spot for it. Okay, the action on the current is a little bit lazier, a little lazier casting. More relaxed. The only is like zip zip. Now we're running back. All right, so that does it for the fishing portion of this video. Now I'm going to talk just about the rods and I'll take them out in the backyard and swing them a little bit. Also, I brought in the Tanuki Streamborn 290 Pocket Ninja into this equation because the Oni really reminded me of the action of that rod. So I'm going to blather on about comparing those rods a little bit. If you don't care, bye bye. If you do, Here's a couple more minutes of rod exceptional nerddom. All right, we're here in the backyard. We've got the Tanuki Pocket Ninja 290 and the Oni Coco Oni 290. So when I was fishing it today, this made me think of this in terms of the action. The Oni being very snappy, and I find the Pocket Ninja Tanuki very snappy as well. So I had to swing them side by side. And indeed, the action is very similar in terms of the casting stroke. The Oni, however, has the advantage, because it's not a pocket rod, it's so light. It's, it's just, a, you know, there's a lot less swing weight and effort involved. But it's not the, comp, you know, the closed size is twice what the Pocket Ninja is, so. Um, but they do have very similar casting strokes. The Pocket Ninja has a lot more inertia, so it takes more effort. But the line, you know, it doesn't quite have the finesse of the Oni. Sort of, of course, that's what Oni is sort of known for. It's just, this action is really great. But it is snappy, and the flex is not too far off. If we can grab both lines, let's see, we can kind of, we can sort of see it. The flex is the same, you know, not the same. Uh, the Tanuki flex is farther down the rod. The Oni is much more of a tip flex only. Tip seems real soft, that's the way all his rods are. Um, but these two rods have similar actions, for sure. Um, I think in terms of joy of casting, the Oni wins just because it's so lightweight. It feels like you're almost holding nothing. You're like you're casting a chopstick. Uh, and it's very little movement. And I feel the same way about that Kerr and I, HM30. Because the Pocket Ninja's a pocket rod and has many more sections, has to be thicker, has to be heavier, 
but still, this is a very accurate casting rod. Um, I've said that before about this rod. It's really nice. Um, and I think the Oni is sort of the same. So I would say if you're looking at these two, I think the Pocket Nind is actually more expensive. That might be something to do with the fancy paint job, um, but the Oni is great. But if you're looking for something that packs down smaller, the Oni is almost twice as long. This is the pack size of the Oni. This is the pack size of the Pocket Ninja. So it really depends on what you want, but I thought I would compare these two when I got back. Just for fun, I'm gonna put the, uh, this line on the Kerr and I and just wave it around a little bit and compare those as well. All right, now I've got the Kerr and I and the Oni both rigged up. Um, these rods are so similar. And as I said in the fishing part, the main difference is the Oni is just zippy. It's like bouncy. If it was a trampoline, the Oni would be a tighter trampoline. And the Kerr and I is just a little bit slower, a little more relaxed, a little more lazy. That super flexible tip section, it's like you don't have to move it very much and it just does all the, the work for you. And so on stream with littler fish, I think I preferred the Kerr and I just because it's, it's a relaxing casting stroke. It's great. Oh man, yeah, it's really nice. Whereas the Oni is much more like, I'm in a hurry, zip, zip. I mean, it can be relaxing too, but just by comparison, the Oni and the Tanuki that I just held are both very zippy. Um, and the Kerr and I is a little softer, a little more relaxed. Um, but both are exceptional and they're, it's just a really good comparison. Um, yeah, so there you go. Two really great rods.